Good morning, Mike. Welcome to the show called Southlane. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, can you share with us your channel? We're excited to know who you are. Who I am? Yes, who is really uh, Mike Skinner before. Yeah, so a bit of my childhood. So uh, I was born here, raised in Peter, Ontario, which is mm -hmm. inside of Canada. Mm -hmm. um, grew up as a pretty average uh, kid in an average middle class family. Mm -hmm. um, played a bit of sports and went to school like I think most kids do here in Canada. But who really inspired you when you were a kid? That's a good question. I mean, I think I've had lots of different inspirations. Um, I mean, my, my parents are obviously a huge uh, inspiration in my life. I think the parents are in most kids, but my, uh, my father was somebody who, you know, really knew how to work, was always working. And then in the tech world, I mean, people like Bill Gates always uh, inspired me. Mm -hmm. you know, I was always, uh, even as a young child, a bit of a software geek. And, uh, and so people like Bill Gates and what they've done, mm -hmm. um, Steve Jobs as well, and so sort of that, that corporate um, software CEO. Mm -hmm. How can you be so focused when you were young? Like, I mean, at the age of 24, starting the business. How did that happen? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, for me, I've always been passionate about building. So mm -hmm. um, I saw you know, I saw a problem and I wanted to fix it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's been everything I've ever done in my whole life. Okay. I like finding problems and I like solving them and I'm very passionate about them. Mm -hmm. um, typically I move on fairly quickly too. You know, I'm, uh, I'm the kind of individual that sees a problem, finds a solution mm -hmm. and then moves on to the next problem. Mm -hmm. And so with Opertel, you know, when you're building a business you always have problems. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was find a problem, mm -hmm. fix the problem, find someone else that can maintain that division of the company or mm -hmm. that problem and allow me to move on to the next Yes. So that, that happened quite a bit, and um, but I think the fact that you know businesses have lots of challenges, they can mm -hmm. be excited, mm -hmm. and um, and I mean, I'm passionate. I love building things, and mm -hmm. uh, and so that keeps my attention for sure. So why you decided to get involved in politics? So really, for the I mean, for the reason I just said, I mean, we have two small children, mm -hmm. and I'm worried about what their world's going to be like. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm very very worried that um, that the current government we have here in Canada. Mm -hmm is not taken into account. I mean, they're spending money at an unbelievable rate. Mm -hmm. uh, they believe success is measured by how much money they spend mm -hmm. and not by results. And uh, I don't think that it's fair for my kids and my fellow people in this community, their kids, to have to pay this debt. And uh, I looked around the room and there was a time when I was much happier standing behind somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but there wasn't really anybody stepping forward qualified to run. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so there's an old saying that says, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you must be part of the problem. Mm -hmm. So I want to be part of the solution. And so I stepped forward and I put my name forward and we very quickly assembled a, a great team. Do you consider yourself successful now? That's a good question. I mean, I think for my personal family values, I'm successful. Um, I mean, it's hard to measure success. You know, I mean, you're not the first person. So, to ask what that. is success to you? Yeah, so you're not the first person <laughs> to ask me that. I mean, I think that my life is. I'm very happy with where things are, um, but I am somebody who's always looking for a challenge, and so that challenge is going to continue driving me. Um, you know, how I reach financial success. I mean, I'm in a stage now where you know I don't have to do things I don't want to do. Um, I do them because I want to, mm -hmm. um, and, and for sure. I mean, I think. Um, you know, my long-term success will be what happened with my two children, so I have two boys. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I truly think that success is how you measure your impact on society. Mm -hmm. And so, I'll, you know, by one point in time, not today, I'll have to go back and evaluate what my impact was mm -hmm. on society, but also what's the impact of my two boys. Mm -hmm. You know, are they going to contribute positively to our community? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I'm proud of them today, but that's what I would consider success. Yeah. What's your... Um biggest project to help immigrants to be settled easily, in, especially in Peterborough, because yeah. culture shock is a big problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, the first thing would be supporting the New Canadian Centre. Okay. You know, as a federal MP, the New Canadian Centre has uh, been an amazing organization. Mm -hmm. um, there's not that many organizations like the New Canadian Centre. It's not a standard agency mm -hmm. that's in every city. Mm -hmm. And so I really think making sure that they've got the support. Now they understand that when new Canadians come into, into Canada, and specifically come to Peterborough, mm -hmm. that there needs to be a support structure. Mm -hmm. and they've done a really good job of putting the support structures together and making sure that um, different, basically making sure that there's different parts of it so that there's, um, you know, Canadians are spending time, you know, with, the, with these individuals have a different faith and making sure that they're faced here and that there's the proper church in the area that they can come to. And really touching in and, and making sure they are integrating into our community. And then also making sure that there, there are jobs. You know, part of um, part of anybody's economy and part of anybody's self-worth, no matter how much money you have, mm -hmm. is you want to have purpose. 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of times purposes is having an occupation mm -hmm. and making sure that these individuals, or at least some of the individuals in their families are, are getting jobs. And, uh, and also making sure, like I said, that it's part of the community. I want them to feel welcome. And so our new community center does a good job of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I truly believe that continuing to support them is, is key. Mm -hmm. And they've been around for, I believe, 40 years. Mm -hmm. and, um, and making sure that they stay around is, is going to be a key piece from, from an immigration point of view, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, asking a personal question. Sure. How are you feel in love with an immigrant? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a great question. So um, how did I fall in love with my wife? So it's funny, Catch is obviously an immigrant to Canada. Um, I spent a lot of time in Brazil, and uh, when we so taking a step back, um, I first met Katja. She worked for one of our offices in Brazil, but I met her at the very first time at the airport here in in Peterborough. And uh, my business partner was supposed to pick her up, and last minute changes, and so they sent me down to pick her up. And so I uh, I picked Katja up at the very first time and, uh, and brought her to Peterborough. And, uh, and we spent a lot of time together, so she helped me expand our operations in Australia and really our operations in Brazil. And, uh, and we just spent a lot of time together and over time we, we fell in love. So it was a bit of a year. It was a bit of an awkward situation because um, like we worked together. And so I was always very cognizant of that. Um, but Ketch is a very strong woman and knows exactly what she wants. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she knows what she doesn't want as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we fell in love. and. I never really considered her uh, an immigrant because I spent time in her country mm -hmm. where, you know, very much I didn't know the language. Mm -hmm. Catch's ability to operate in Canada was, was very easy. She could speak English. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in Brazil, it was much different. I mean, I relied on somebody at all times to sort of help me through. I mean, for me to walk out the door and, and go to a convenience store and buy something, mm -hmm. something I couldn't do very well because, for the most part, um, English isn't spoken. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, I relied pretty heavily on on mm -hmm. Katja, So. Well, yeah, she's an amazing lady, and she works you know, twice as hard as I do. Mm -hmm. um, and she loves our children, and she's very, she's a very good mother, and she's a, she's a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. um, you want to um, give yeah. a good message for them? So I think a big message for me is that you know here in Peterborough Court, in this region here, you know everybody's equal. You know we very much want to see as many people come into our country as possible. I think we're a very strong country because of our diversity and it gives us a lot of strength. And uh, for me, I'd like to obviously continue seeing immigrants from around the world coming here, you know, different cultures, different skills, different talents, really coming in and making this community a better community. And I think we've, uh, we've had a lot of strong um, immigrants come to, to Peterborough already. You know, a number of years ago, we were listed as the highest number of um, entrepreneur um, immigrants that there was per capita. So a lot of our business has been driven by, by immigrants. Um, but also we've got a lot of you know long-standing traditional families that have been here for six, seven generations as well. And so I think um, I want to continue seeing what I do see and it's an integrated community where everybody respects each other and really works together to, with one common goal and that's to make this a better community for everybody's family and for their grandchildren and technically their grandchildren after that. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'm Rebecca Bustamante and this is Surfly.